So we've got this machine at a point where we can now move forward to pouring the concrete. But before we do that, we're gonna diligently check every aspect of this assembly, make sure we've done everything properly, make sure no mistakes have happened. We're gonna take our time, check everything. The reason we need to be so diligent is because once uh, we start pouring concrete in this, it's very hard to go back and fix any mistakes. Um, so we're gonna just check everything. We're gonna take our time. Um, fix anything now before it's, before we start the concrete process and it's too late. First thing I'm gonna check, make sure I've got my uh, Y-axis rail mounts oriented properly. And the way you know they're oriented properly is that I've got the uh, tie bar, which has these rectangular pass-through holes. That's oriented on the front faces of the vertical tubes. Um, if you install this uh, part backwards, which it's possible to do that, what happens is it'll interfere with the positioning of the base plate and the base plate won't be able to be installed uh, after the concrete is in here. Similarly, you want to have uh, the, the rear rail mount such that the tie bar is oriented on the back vertical faces of the tubes. Check number two, we're going to check to make sure that the uh, chip tray is still level. The reason that this is important is because, um, you know, for the concrete, the concrete wants to flow a certain direction. The water on top of the concrete is going to want to flow in a certain direction. So the more level that we have this, the better. And especially if you're going to be doing epoxy afterwards, you need to get this um, as level as you can get it because the epoxy is going to basically earth level itself. Uh, and the more level we have this, the, the better that process will be. To do that, I'm gonna use my level here, set it across the chip tray, just like this, kind of over the top of the corner drains, checking it so that that direction's good. I'm gonna pick it up here, move it to the back. And that's good on that side. And I expect this to be good because I took the time to adjust my leveling feet. Um, again, if you don't have leveling feet and you need to make corrections here, you'll have to use uh, shim stock under the feet or under the legs uh, to get this to be level. That looks good. And then the last side I'll check here. And that's level. Check number three is to make sure we have the uh, temporary tray support properly installed. So the key thing here is that we wanna have it roughly right in the middle of the underside of the chip tray. Um, we wanna have a fair amount of preload on the jack bolt to make sure that it, it doesn't move. And we also want it to be vertical in both planes. So I'm gonna look under there and I'm gonna double check, is it centered and is it vertical? So that looked good from that side. And I can check this side. And that looks good. It looks centered and it looks vertical. And that's, that's what we need for this. For check number three, I want to verify that my uh, corner drains are flowing water properly. If there's an issue with the way that they're flowing, I want to know that now before I pour the concrete. Obviously, if you don't have a, either the uh, flood coolant drain kit or the, the complete flood coolant system, uh, you wouldn't have drains installed here. Uh, so you can omit this step or this check, but I would strongly encourage you to consider before pouring the concrete to at least consider the option of purchasing at minimum the drain kit. Um, because once you pour the concrete, there's no feasible way to add a uh, flood coolant system after the fact. Um, so the way that I'm going to check the, um, the flow of each corner drain is by first removing the mesh filter screen. I have a cup of water in one hand and then an empty cup in the other hand. I'm simply going to put the empty cup under the um, output of the uh, left front corner drain and I'm just going to pour water into the corner drain and just make sure that it flows properly. and that's flowing just fine. So I'm gonna do this same process for all four corners. So for check number four, we're going to make sure that our Y-axis rail stiffeners uh, line up to the hole locations properly that are uh, drilled and tapped into the sides of the Y-axis rails. 
what happens is we're going to first pour concrete into the chip tray and then these get pushed into the concrete um, until the slots line up to the holes. Um, we first want to just make sure that all these holes line up because if there is a situation where they don't line up, we want to make sure that we can have get that addressed for you prior to uh, you pouring the concrete. Otherwise, once the concrete's in there and you're trying to deal with this, it's, it, it won't be a good thing. So that's why we wanna do this check first and know if there's an issue in advance. So I'm gonna check this one just right here first, and I'm just gonna lay it against there and just double check to make sure that all the holes line up all the way across. And this one looks like it's fine. So this won't be an issue at all. Now, I wanna check all four of these. So this would be number one but I wanna get the other three stiffeners and check it at each of the other three locations. I wanna check all of them and make sure that they all line up. For check number five, I'm gonna make sure I have the Y-axis rails and the rail mounts um, at the correct measurements, both to itself and its position in the chip tray. First thing I'm gonna check is the, uh, the 34 inch measurement um, at the front and at the back. So here's what I'm, measuring, um, I'm seeing 34 inches here. And I'm gonna check that over here. So I have 34 inches on both sides, so that's good. Next, I'm going to check the diagonal measurements. So I'm reading right around 49 and a half. I could check it over here. That's about a 16th under 49 and a half. So you really only need to get the diagonal measurements to match within about a 16th. That's close enough for this. The next measurement I'm going to take is from the front edge of the chip tray to the front face of the vertical tubes. That should be about 8.3 inches. And as you can see, it's a little bit over eight and a quarter. And then I'm going to do the same over here a little bit over eight and a quarter. So that looks good. And then I'm also going to do a visual check to make sure that the assembly is um, centered in the chip tray. And I could also consider just doing a quick measurement on this side, just right around a little under three and a quarter. And I would double check on the other side to make sure that it is the, uh, the same dimension. Yep, yeah, about three and a quarter. And then the last check, one check that's very important is we want to make sure that our base plate positioners will actually drop into the slots because after the concrete is in and we've got these base plate positioners connected to the base plate and we're pushing it into the concrete, we have to have confidence that the y-axis rails are spaced to the um, same distance as these protrusions on each end of the base plate positioner. So easy way to check that is just to put it right onto the y-axis rails and make sure that those tabs can sit in, in uh, the slots. So that one fits, the front one fits fine, and this one fits fine as well. So now I know when I've got the base plate on there, it's gonna drop in and locate properly.